so before we start, um, I want to introduce um, the participants. Um, Therese, do you want to start since you're the first box on my screen? Sure. <laughs> Thanks, Andrew. Um, hi, my name is Therese Fisher. This is actually my third year working with NCPP. Um, I started the summer of 2018 as a workshop participant. And then 2019, I kind of took on a mentor role for that project. And then, yeah, this year I was a participant, so I was a photographer, and I also helped to run the social media for the New York Community Theater Project. Awesome. Thank you, Therese. Um, Ashley, you want to go next? Hi, my name is Ashley Simeon. Um, this is my second year at NCPP. Um, last summer, I was a um, participant and my focus was domestic violence. And this year, I'm also a participant and I um, was part of a uh, head of the installation and liaison. So it was really nice trying um, being a part of this group again. And I really like how everything turned out this year. Awesome, thank you, Ashley. Uh, David? Hi, uh, my name is David Cordero. I am uh, one of the participants for this year's project. Um, like Therese, I was also a participant in 2018 in the workshops. In 2019, I was a mentor, took a mentor role. And now this year, um, collaborated again with Therese and Vince and now uh, I was glad to meet Roger, so, and also all the other participants. Awesome. Thank you, David. And Angela, uh, you're up. Hi, my name is Angela Montiel. Um, I was a participant in 2019 um, and this year for 2020. And I'm so glad I got to meet everybody. Um, I made good connections with everyone. Um, I'm really glad just as Ashley is about how everything turned out this year. So, yeah. Thank you, Angela. And thank you everyone for the introductions. Um, so before we start the um, talk, I want to show a video piece that was made in conjunction with our show. Thank you. 
I just want to read our, our, um, our written statement for the project. Um, I think this statement gives a pretty great summary of what our intentions were with this project. Um, Newburgh Community Photo Project's Public Art Action is a collaborative group project calling attention to the COVID-19 pandemic, the, plant, uh, the Black Lives Matter movement and the parallels between them. Both affect ethnically diverse communities such as Newburgh, New York. Um, the participants of the NCPP summer workshop photographed the residents of Newburgh, many of whom have experienced the greatest effects of the pandemic and police violence. Black, brown, and immigrant communities that make up almost 75% of the city's population. We sought to explore the relationship of both issues by engaging the Newburgh community to be part of this conversation. NCPP workshop participants photographed subjects from these neighborhoods with masks that have one of three statements um, printed on them. COVID safe, hashtag BLM, or I can't breathe. The posters were we pasted onto eight prominent buildings in, in neighborhoods where the subjects reside and where pedestrian and vehicular traffic are high. Participants also recorded brief interviews of the subjects, which will be used as sound pieces and clips on social media. Check out our uh, Instagram for those. Um, this action serves as a reminder to residents that their health and safety are still at risk, and they have a critical role to play in, in the pandemic and the Black Lives Matter movement. It is through their actions and conversations that change will occur. NCPP believes it is vital to advocate for everyone especially during this time of social un un unrest. We want to affirm to the residents of these communities that they have rights of voice and the ability to create lasting change. Finally, NCPP hopes this project will have a lasting impact on the city of Newburgh um, by uniting different communities in a common cause. So this project was done in conjunction with um, JR, the artist JR, um, and the Inside Out Project. The Inside Out Project um, helps communities um, help facilitate um, art actions to, um, to tackle specific um, social justice issues. Um, uh, so I, I really want to thank JR and the Inside Out Project for their generosity in the project. Um, it's, it's really great to be part of this global conversation about um, social justice. And um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm really grateful for being a part of it. Um, so we, so this round table is basically a I wanted to give the um, the uh, participants in the project a chance to talk about their experiences in working on this project. Um, so without further ado, here are the questions. <laughs> um, so I'll ask um, Therese first, what role can art play in opening a dialogue about social issues? And how do you see that as being beneficial to a community like Newburgh? Sure. Um, well, I think every step of the way of this project, we had a lot of conversations around these issues um, from the beginning of the project, figuring out how we wanted to approach it, who we wanted to photograph, and what masks. During the project, we had such meaningful conversations with our subjects. And then after the project, you know, Yesterday at Open Studios, people were really moved and they really resonated with the work that we did. So we were able to talk about things like racism, police brutality, and the pandemic, and the interplay between race and the pandemic. And um, talking about how it's beneficial to the city of Newburgh, you know, not only does it have the power to improve the aesthetics, but it's empowering for residents to walk in the city and see 
not maybe not them but people that look like them and so I think that is empowering and um you know masks the masks I can't breathe and hashtag BLM like having them up in the city is just a part of maintaining this moment momentum in this fight for racial justice and racial equality because it's not over and with that being said as far as the pandemic you know COVID safe like we're seven months in and maybe people are starting to this is it seems like a new normal maybe they're becoming more comfortable with the idea of it but that doesn't mean that COVID is any less deadly so it's a good reminder for people to wear their masks you know when they walk in the street and they see COVID safe so yeah I think um yeah that's that's great um I think one thing that was said during one of our, our meetings I think it might have been Angela that mentioned it that it was important for this project to serve as a um, as a way of continuing continuing the conversation, like you were saying to us. And uh, I think she she said that this is a a movement, not a moment. Yeah. And I think it's really great that you guys were able to sort of contribute to that um, to to that movement. You know. Um, also considering how we could use art in a way in, in in a way to advocate for people during um during these times it's very very strange times and i think it's now it's important now than ever to have kind of have each other's backs you know what i mean um ashley what about you how do you, how do you uh see art playing a role in opening dialogue of social issues i think as on what therese said it's like almost like a constant reminder like when you like go around newburgh and you see these buildings and you see these posters and you have like people with the masks on it's like serves as a reminder to not only wear your mask because of um the pandemic that's going on because uh as you can s sort of see like before in March, like when it first started, like everyone was scared and everyone was like treated as, as really serious. But as you see, like as the months move down or move up, like nobody's, not a lot of people is like paying as much attention as before. We're not taking the pandemic as serious as it should be. That's why um, like um, I think statistics or the science is saying that we are about to have like a second wave because we are not like even our president before he didn't take it as serious serious as we should have and now there's more people being sick and stuff so by having like this constant reminder of like to wear your wear your mask and to do all these precautions like hopefully the numbers can go down and we can hopefully get back to our normal lives because we can't do that right now with everything going on like we can't be selfish and put people's health at risk when this is going on so hopefully um, our project, like even though it's in like one city, that it can like spread and like get to more people than it, um, that we have right now. Yeah, it's really important to keep this conversation going, especially since I think in New York we um, we we were sort of one of the first cities, hit, uh, first states hit really hard, and I think we. Um, there's a chance of, of and I, I, one thing I could commend about New Yorkers is that we all sort of banded together and, you know, we're, 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 we, for the most part, we're all doing our part. But like you were saying, Ashley, second wave could happen. And, you know, our project, um, not to toot our own horn or anything, but it's, it's, a, it's a good reminder to people like, hey, wear your mask, don't leave your house without the mask. This is still a threat. Um, yeah, that's perfect. Um, one uh, one thing I forgot to mention, um, as we have these discussions, we're going to also play um, some of the participants uh, in a slideshow. We'll show some of their work that they were made. Um, hopefully it's work that also wasn't in the video because we, we made a lot of por great portraits. Um, so, um, so, David, how how was it to work on a socially driven project like unmasking the truth during a pandemic like what are some of the like considerations that you thought of as you're going out into the community things like that 
Uh, so some things that I thought, you know, when taking on this project was, you know, how would people approach, how would the community approach this? Um, because, you know, it's, it's hard to approach people with the type of symptoms this, this virus, you know, shows. So um, we went cautiously with hand sanitizers and we, we uh, spoke about how we were going to uh, approach folks like this. So I think that we did a great job as a group um, in speaking about that. And also, um, yeah, I, I, I have to say the community, um, I'm just, I'm getting off topic a bit, but I just want to say that community did a great job with, with uh, following, you know, the protocols we had for them. So, you know, props to the city of Newburgh and, um, yeah, that's pretty much what I have to say about that. Yeah, I, I think it, um, it kind of goes back to what I was saying. Uh, it might be a New Yorker thing that we, um, I, I noticed too, while when we were engaging in the community, I, I, people were willing to play, um, not play along, but um, sort of, they understood what we were doing and they saw the value in what our public art action could achieve. Um, and it, it's, you know, it's, that's, that in, in working in a, in a, uh, working during these times, that, that's extremely reassuring that, you know, um, you're not, we're not uh, talking to uh, um, like an empty room, you know, people are listening and it, it um, yeah, it's really powerful. Um, how about you, Angelo? What do you think um, about working on a project like this during a pandemic? Uh, for me personally, I think it was a little difficult. Um, especially because I work uh, in an environment where I'm surrounded by people. I work at the time I was working at a restaurant and I was working in an office with people that were over the age of 60 and 80 years old. So it was very difficult for me to, to, you know, like trying to stay safe and protect others at the same time while also, you know, protecting myself and my own family. Um, and even at one point I did get sick. Thank God it wasn't COVID, but um, because of it, I had to, I felt so scared to, to go out in public and photograph others that I st took a step back and didn't continue for, I think two weeks um, with the project, unfortunately, as much as I wanted to continue. Um, but I did, I did continue afterwards, as, like as soon as I got my, uh, my test results negative. Um, but yeah, you know, you kind of go into like this panic mode of like, what if, you know, what if I do have that? What if um, I hurt others or, or, you know, like you don't want that. Nobody wants that. Um, and yeah, so, but of course I, before that um, I did, I always wore gloves to make people feel more secure that, you know, like touching pens when they had to sign things or, um, holding the camera, like making sure that everything was just safe. I, I try to have hand sanitizer with me at all times, or usually pe people always had hand, hand sanitizers with them. Um, yeah. And like, I always had my mask on people always, the majority always had their mask on. Um, and if they didn't, I would like just ask them to put the mask on, um, or they would keep the mask that I gave them. Uh, yeah. But yeah, it was yeah. it was a little bit um, overwhelming at some times. Uh, even even the other participants were a little like nervous to to go into this at at the beginning because that's when it was like mostly like affecting the majority. Like there was like a huge wave happening during that time. So yeah, yeah. but it, it was it was a lot. At, at the beginning but you know like we started to now we're all we're all getting a little comfortable now with wearing masks um and it also like breathing you know making sure we all taking care of ourselves is a big step yeah 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 i think um i i totally hear you that it was definitely a struggle at least for me um i remember the first uh time going out and photographing it was therese and i and 
you know, there's so there, there are certain rule parameters that were set in place by the Inside Out project to um, to fit in their parameters to to sort of continue that global um, conversation about social issues. But so we're worried about that. But at the same time, we're also worried about health and safety. That's that's very hectic. Um, and I think. Um, yeah, it took some time getting used to, for sure. Um, I think um, the, I think o over time, like we got used to it. Um, and like I was saying before, and what Angela said, the community was extremely um, engaged with, um, with what we were doing. It was, you know, we were very supported um, and, I know I'm not a Newburgh resident, but I I can see the camaraderie in this city. And it was something that kind of kept me going through the project, seeing seeing how how much people um sort of responded to what we were um to what we were doing. Um so uh Ashley, um, can you recall a special moment you had um, uh, while working in the within the community? Um, I think one in interaction that came to mind was um, it was that day that me and David were out in the community um, walking around and trying to find um, subjects for our photos. And I remember this one family. Um, it was. Um, it was they all took um the photos together it was a grand a grandmother um her daughter and also her daughter so it was like three generations um and it was just really um nice to like for them to be like so active and wanted to participate in it and i just thought that um like usually with these movements like with the media coverage and stuff you see like a a lot of younger people um wanted to like participate and be active in our movement but you can also see there's also a lot of people in the older generations that also support our um the i can breathe and black lives matter movement and not only black people but also our allies like um hispanic people white people and stuff like that so it's good to show that everyone um can come together for a time like this for a crisis like this so it was really nice to see um the um, different people, part of our community, want to be part of it. Yeah, for sure. Um, I'm actually going to ask this question to um, to all four of you. I would I would actually like to know um, some of these special moments that you had. So, uh, how about um, how about you, Therese? Do you have a, a special um, moment uh, while working? Yeah, um, I think. Well, first of all, I just think we had a lot of special moments and uh, really good conversations with community members. But I think um, what comes to mind is during our first time shooting, um, I met a woman named Edda. She is a Latino woman. She lives in Cornerstone on Broadway. And um, she was really worried. And she was talking to me and explaining how she didn't see people wearing masks and how, and even in her portrait, you can kind of see the worry in her eyes. but when I asked her, why do you think it's important that we're all COVID safe? And she said, because we love each other. And like you said, Roger, it, there were a lot of things going on, you know, following the, fitting in the parameters of the Inside Out project and what we had to do for that. And then also worrying about health and safety, but that was just a nice reminder and, and kind of step back and remember. Um, yeah. I. I know the photo. I, I think it's actually in your slideshow. I, I included it because yeah. that was one of my. Um, I think that was one of my favorite photos in the within the whole project. It um, the look in her eyes are um, it's it's almost like heartbreaking. She she yeah. it she seemed very um, like like she seemed really nervous. But she the, the what she said, and I, I remember hearing her interview. Um, that you recorded of her, it was um, it was really sweet. It was definitely like the icing on the cake that day. Um, how about you, uh, David? Any special moments that you had um, in the community? Uh, 
Yeah, so like Therese said, there was many to choose from. There's many to choose from. Uh, but what I enjoyed about it was, you know, how we try to get a demographic, a group of people. You know, we were like, we want to do from the youth to, um, you know, the, the most the, the, uh, elders and also, uh, you know, a lot of blacks and Latinos. So when I photograph, you know, these older Latino males um, and I expressed to them what was happening to these black folks, uh, men and women, and, you know, they were in support of the movement. And so to hear that from an older generation, that, you know, says a lot. And so I have to say that was a special moment for me when working in this project. Yeah, I remember you having a um, discussion with an older white man, actually. Um, and oh, let me preface this part with, um, let me explain. So um, one of the um, parameters that we set for ourselves was um, I can't breathe and um, specific, I am hashtag BLM where were masks that were primarily aimed for people of color, black and brown people. Just because that that um, the phrase "I can't breathe" in particular is synonymous with police brutality and um, and it's a phrase that sort of it's it's in our culture now, and it's it's kind of like a, it's haunting almost. Um, in multiple killings, you have George Floyd, um, the, um, I'm drawing a blank on his name, but the, the man selling loose cigarettes in the, in the city, um, Eric Gardner, thank you. Um, and they say the same thing. I can't breathe. And, um, there's a, uh, there was, you know, there's, there's a, there's lack of empathy um in in hearing that that voice that that phrase in our in our police system and so i know david had a uh um an older white man who sort of resonated with that phrase i can't breathe and that kind that that um that sort of like changed the conversation to us where like we're thinking that this is more that the, that phrase is not just an issue that is is inherent to black and brown people like there are allies that see hear that phrase and are sort of called to action or called to feel a certain way um so i i, I think that was a really important um important moment for you david i think yeah that photo of that man i think is also in your slideshow so hopefully we can see that um uh how about you uh angela any special moments um yeah i have quite a few uh a good handful um it's really hard to pick one and like just say them but i'll try to like i'm gonna say a couple and just try to like you know compress what it was um no so for me i think the first person i photographed was quintel um and we had an interesting conversation. I let him like express himself. And um, basically he was just telling me how, how it's pretty difficult to become successful as a black man. And, you know, you have to prove, you basically have to prove yourself and your worth um, to society. And it's, it's very heartbreaking. Um, but yeah. And then as well, uh, Leo Martinez, um, he very, he was Hispanic, but very much resonated with the I can't breathe as well. Um, but, but he had a, this experience in the South, um, which I feel like a lot, it's a little bit more racist um, like in comparison. And, and, you know, it's just not fair. Um, also with, um, I was actually also with, with David at, walking in the street and we saw this, um, Mexican older man uh, and it really like touched my heart because to me with like the Hispanic community it's a little bit difficult to get them on 
the Black Lives Matter movement, especially the elders, um, because uh, racism is like so, how do you say it? Like in, it, it's so deep that it's like in our culture to be racist. And, you know, like there's always, I hate this phrase that, that, that Hispanics say, um, it's, it's uh, mejorar la raza, but it's translated as to better, the, better our race. But they don't mean that like we must be like smarter or better people. They mean it as you must be whiter because you are, that's like the superior race. Um, and I hate that. I hate it very much uh, because um, not, I don't have anything as white people. Like I don't think they're all horrible people. Like I just feel like no one's superior to anybody. You know, we're all, we're all worse. Um, so I was always like, uh, like, kind of scared to go like with like older people I, I even like was like telling David I'm like I don't know if he's gonna say yes but we can try um and I don't really remember his age I'm pretty sure he's above 60 um and he was like so with it he was so with it he's like yeah I know I know how they feel they they need our support like you know so that was very very touching to me to see an older Mexican man like completely understanding and being um empathetic with the movement so yeah yeah i i think that that's that that last point you made is is super important about um racism within cultures and how how deep rooted some thoughts are that can be um like we said, like, like you said, racist, it's, it's a rate, but there's a, um, you, you know, I, I'm glad that we're having these kind of discussions about, um, about racism and calling people out on racism, because this is how we stop those cycles. I think, I think in, within cultures, like you said, that phrase is, was probably passed throughout generations of, of Hispanic people. And, you know, the the rationale behind that is oh i have black friends you know i have you know i have friends that are darker than me i'm not racist but you say something like that which is it's very racist it's a very, it's a racist way to, uh, of of it's a racist mindset and i think to be able to catch yourself and and realize that yes oh okay that is offensive i need to change we need to change um we need to work f towards that change i think that's that's super important and should be um and it shouldn't be right away from you know make, making those mistakes like hey I, I thought this way but you know i i was i'm educated now you know you know what i mean it, there's there's nothing wrong with uh, with um with with uh with that um so Next question. Um, I'll turn this to Ashley. Um, what have you learned while working with NCPP and has working on this project affected you um, in the way you photograph and you work as an artist in any way? Or is it sort of it, like, it, was this like out of your comfort zone or you, you know what I mean? Um, yeah, um, for the most part, it kind of, um, this, this year, um, we focused more of like, um, more people because last year it was more like individualized and like one-on-one. -on -one. And this year we had to like actually go out of our, out of our um, comfort zone and like uh, approach different in people in the community. So it kind of told me, um, to be more extroverted because I'm not used to just going up to like random strangers and like asking them, Hey, do you want to take a photo or something like that? So it told me to be um, more social and um, to try to get out of this um, zone because I needed to in order to um, do this project for the workshop. So that was one thing that it has taught me to do. And I think um, another thing has been to, um, I don't, I think that's for the most part, um, this is what, this is all really I can think of for right now. So yeah, so it's been pretty good this year. Yeah, I, I think that that's, um, yeah, I, I didn't work with you all during the, um, the 
other projects you were working on, but I think there is some value and we're, we're all having the same discussion and, you know, we, we, um, it's more it, there's there's definitely a sense of camaraderie with us all because we're all sort of fighting um so it like i i gotta say the the first day we met um which is you know a lot of what our project statement is based on was what you guys were saying um you know i i was just taking notes and i i kind of just translated into what what you guys are um what you guys were thinking and what you're feeling and um i think um yeah i i think working us all working on the same exact project was was very helpful but it also gave us like as as photographers talking about the craft now i think it gives you really great skills in communicating with um strangers and your but strangers within your community because I know in my personal work, um, where I'm photographing a lot more all around in Orange County, but specifically Middletown, um, 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 I'm engaging with people. And just like you, Ashley, I'm s super shy uh, in my personal life. I'm very, very shy. But when it comes to photography, I, I, you, you kind of have to be a bit more extrovert, extroverted and you have to sort of push yourself to get um to you know make the photos that you want to do david how about you um has as uh has the way you work during this um during the pandemic has it changed the way you photograph in your personal life or 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 is it sort of business as usual no so um you know like you, Raj, when I first started doing photography in 2018, it was very like, you know, uh, still still a, a subject. So such as like nature and stuff like that, because you know you're shy. You know, you're 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 shy to speak to folks, and um, now you know it's I've become more comfortable, right, approaching folks. That's what NCPP has taught me. And with this project, you know, we all we all we photographed was subject. So we had no other choice but to approach people. And that's how we got the work done. And also, um, I have to give a lot of props to you and Vince, because you guys really pushed this to and, and so did everyone else who was involved, our mentors, really pushed us to go out there and, you know, speak to people about this issue and our our public skills basically you know that's how that's how i feel and i feel that i've become a master in doing so and so i just want to say thank you for that no problem man i think um yeah i think these are um very really useful skills that you guys learned um during the um during the session and and you know previously too cuz you know we're we're sort of um we're we're uh killing two birds with one stone so to speak um you know we're tr we're the you're learning skills about photography but also how to use photography in a way where you can address these social issues that are going on it could be global or it could it could be right around the corner it could be right across the street it could be within your own home and you know having this um sort of like a um uh, visual literacy um, sort of like uh, education is, is uh, extremely important. Um, you know, I, I think that's that's super important. Um, uh, how about uh, you, Angela? What do you think? Uh, has has ha has the way you work changed at all, or? Um. I think it's interesting because I was never like really interested in photography. I was always interested in art. I like to do like, I like colored pencil and, and painting and, but photography was never like something, even with like my phone, my mom, she would always ask me to take a picture and I'd just 
take a horrible picture and she's like I don't like it when you take pictures of me and 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 now I use with uh, NCBP to let me borrow a camera and a more professional camera and and with everything I've learned it's a lot different now my mom likes how I take pictures <laughs> um so yeah and I'm also a very shy person. I think most of us here are very shy in our personal lives. Um, I actually have um, uh, antisocial uh, anxiety and disorders. It's like, you know, and plus I am dyslexic and it's very hard for me to like speak to people. Even if I know them, even with like my friends, I, I struggle. So I, I but I do think it's be, made me become more comfortable um, speaking and speaking with uh, strangers, um, being comfortable and getting out of your comfort zone is a big thing. Um, yeah, so yeah, definitely uh, NCPP has helped me with like getting out of my comfort zone and taking better quality pictures. And and I think it's, it's shown me that it doesn't just have to be photography. Um, for example, Therese, I think she does a great job with interviews. Um, you don't have to take a picture. It could be just an interview uh, or just expressing yourself with art. Um, they're wonderful artists in Newburgh, which I've met and know personally. Um, but yeah. Yeah, I think, yeah, that's, um, that's great. I think um, when I was um, in undergrad at SUNY Purchase, I, um, my friends and I, we, we noticed that a lot of work that was made at uh, school was very personal, uh, very personal, intimate work, which, you know, all the work is really great coming out at school. It's a little plug for SUNY Purchase. But um, my friends and I, this was during the 2016, lead up to the 2016 election. And I don't know if you guys remember things um, in the news and just politics in general were getting so heated and the work that we were sort of making in school just didn't seem um, important in a way. And we were trying to figure out how else can we use photography to address these issues that are like sort of plaguing the nation, how like plaguing our communities, like we see it every day but how can we use photography in an effective way to tell these stories that are on their mind? So I think you guys getting these, this education is, like I said before, is extremely invaluable. I just wanna say like first and foremost, working with NCPP all these years, I've just learned how important it is to use like your platform and your privilege to uplift voices of people that aren't like normally heard. But I also wanna to touch on something that Angela said and that is specific to this project and that is recognizing our own biases and understanding how deep colorism and racism runs in most, if not all cultures. Um, so yeah, I think that was something very specific to this project. And I just wanna say the, uh, the residents of the city of Newburgh, their grit and their stories um, are so inspiring and it's made me wanna to continue to do work, but um to shift and, and combine media and photography in a way that I can incorporate social activism and um, use it as a platform to speak about things that really matter so yeah yeah I think yeah that's great um so last question and this is going to all of you again <laughs> um we'll start off with David um and it could be as long or as short as you want it. What do you all hope this project can do in a city like Newburgh? Um, I guess in long term. What I what I wish this this project does is and inspires other um, other people to continue being socially distant and learning about Black history and and the racism that is dealt with in this country, and also. I I wanted to also inspire the youth in this city. Um, you know, when I started, I was a little younger, so I want other younger generations um, to follow these steps. You know, learn arts and culture and get into photography. I think there's a lot of talent 
here in the city of Newbury that has to be shown and, and, you know, like a platform like NCPP where they can go and learn and express those skills. I really wish that it would, you know, bring up a question to the, the parents and kids and say, you know, how can I get a fo my photograph, you know, posted up there in those buildings. Yeah, that's great. Um, Angela, how about you? What what is the um what do you hope this project can do for a city like Newburgh? Um, I think I agree with uh David with um hoping that it will inspire the younger generation. And actually I I had my sister, my younger sister, she's twelve and she actually saved up some money um a couple months back to uh get herself a used camera. And I think that was that was really cute. That was really nice to see her because I think she saw that I was doing like photography and she's like, oh, I want to do that too. And um, before I knew it, she had her own little camera. Um, I was like really proud of her. She was like photographing her pets and like her friends. And, you know, and I think it starts at small, you know, like um, I hope maybe it will inspire um maybe people will try to make their own little uh, organizations like and make their own thing you know uh, uh i hope with, with the project it will make people remember that they might look at the picture and be like oh that looks like my daughter that looks like my father that looks like somebody i know um that looks like me and think about their well-being not just like protecting them from an illness, protecting them from others, uh, people that are very hateful. And um, maybe take a minute and you know what, instead of giving hate, give love and, and keep that in mind, being compassionate towards others, being compassionate that, that if when they look at those buildings and all the pictures that they'll, they'll realize that they have their own lives going on and that they have their own struggles and uh, that could be you, you know? So, yeah. Yeah, that's a great answer. Um, how about you, Ashley? Um, so I was hoping that um, through this um, project that it can like um, take away the biases that people have about Newburgh because usually when um, people hear about Newburgh they think oh, oh like gangs gun violence all this bad stuff which is which is also a problem but I think it's also important to show that not everyone is involved in that, that there's a lot of people in the community that appreciate art photography music and stuff like that and you have like um, I don't know if you know this rapid partisan like he was he's from like born and raised in Newburgh and he was um and he grew up to become like a, like a like a celebrity and stuff like that and there's a lot of people that you just don't um hear about that appreciate art and create art are just like so important to the community and that in order to um show that art is important and that it can help improve like the lifestyle and people in it so by having by continuing this this project and workshop there we can ex inspire more people to do the same and help um, bring about more creativity yeah for sure it's it's really important to tear down these like these sort of um Therese was saying it like these biases that people have to the inner city um and um you know there's not there's more to a to, to a to a city like Newburgh than the violence you know there's there's a lot going on in, in that city and you um you know you guys you guys are the, the example of that you know um uh how about you Therese yeah um well first I would say I think everyone made such great points and I agree that hopefully this inspires future generations and hopefully it places um emphasis on just like how important the arts are um but going to like what angela said i hope that this project can kind of bring people together in the community and realize that we're in this together and also um etta who i was talking about the lady you know like we love each other and um this is such a painful time and a lot of people are suffering and especially in our community and it's historic time and we need to remember that we do love each other 
we support each other and that we're in this fight together. So yeah, I just hope that this project fosters like a sense of unity and togetherness and yeah. Yeah, that's all. So it's all about. Uh, um, so yeah, that's the last question. Um, I want to thank you all for. Uh, we've actually finished right on time, I think. Um, I want to thank you all for um, for giving us your time. Uh, you guys did great. Um, you should be extremely proud of the work you guys did um, this summer. Um, it's really fantastic work. So I'm re I'm really proud of you all. And um, yeah, good stuff. So um, if there's any questions, if any of the audience, anyone listening, if you guys have any questions, um, like I said before, um, just put them in the chat box or unmute your mic, <laughs> maybe, I don't know, whatever is easier. Uh, what I will do is uh, we have, uh, I believe one question so far. So I will also uh, introduce the co-curators of the Dos Mundos exhibition. Uh, but before I do that, <clears throat> I want to congratulate everyone, uh, Roger, Ashley, Therese, uh, David, um, Angela, and one of the participants who's not here, uh, Lexi, or Alexander Gonzalez um, on a job really, really well done. I, during the COVID crisis, uh, as I was spending four months in quarantine in my dark room continually, uh, I thought how the best way to deliver the workshops this summer uh, would look like. Uh, and this project came to mind because of the, as some of the participants mentioned, because of the, uh, the fact that they didn't have to be so intimately involved in the subjects that they were photographing. They were making portraits, they were able to stand at a, uh, at a safe distance and making these portraits. And that was really critical. Uh, also really critical was providing safety uh, for these participants. So we had very strict guidelines, safety guidelines that we instituted uh, here. We only, I only selected five people uh, because of the safety issues. So we were able to social distance as we were inside of the space as you see in the back. Um, but I also, more importantly, I want to say that Roger came to me maybe about nine months ago and said he wanted to be involved in NCPP. Um, we had a few discussions. He helped out tremendously with our fundraiser, uh, which was a magic show in, um, in March, actually eight days before the lockdown. Had we waited a little bit longer, we never would have been able to do that. Uh, but Roger, I think, has really come through, as you can see, uh, you know, the way he's engaging with the participants through this roundtable discussion. He came through tremendously uh, during this entire project, and I'm going to congratulate him. Uh, I also want to say that in selecting people, from the previous two summer workshops, these five participants, uh, who I mentioned who you see now, I mean, we're listening to, were really the ones that shone through in terms of their involvement, their commitment, their passion, not only to photography, uh, but to their community. And I just want to applaud all of you and say congratulations, and I'm very proud of you. Um, so, um, what I'm going to do is, uh, the first question, uh, or one, the one question that we have so far, uh, and we'll ask this, and then maybe I'll introduce, I'll go on and introduce uh, Stephanie and Juanita, uh, and they can engage in discussion with the participants about the relationship of what we do here, and also the Dos Mundo exhibition. Uh, so, Andrea Wynn uh, wrote in, do you have issues finding subjects to photograph, or did you find that the majority of the people were excited to participate? And I guess we'll, uh, let's start with, I think Therese actually spoke a little bit about this. So Therese, do you maybe want to mention something or expand on that issue? 
Sure. Yeah. Um, so I, most people were, the majority of people who we talked to were really understanding and they really resonated with our project. But in terms of photographing people, personally, I kind of had a hard time. A lot of people didn't really want to. Um, I, there were a lot of times where I approached people on the street and they kind of shut me down. And I just, I think that's part of it. Um, I've experienced that with every project actually. And so just working past that um, is important. And with that being said though, there were a lot of people who were so down and really awesome subjects. So yeah, that's what I can say about that. I can say that it was um for the same thing like as Therese, it was like, uh, for me, it was 50-50. Like, um, for the most part, like, depending on who I um, went up to, there was a lot of people that said no, or like, oh, I'm not comfortable with having my picture taken, which is um, understandable. And because I talked about, like, how it's going to be presented, and a lot of people don't want, like, their um, photo posted on buildings or in such, like, a public area. So that was understandable. But there was also a lot of people that uh, did agree to it. So that was really good to have, like, to see so many residents um, want to actually partake in a project like this. So it was it was a good feeling to know that there's a lot of people that agree with the movement and um, were actually happy to be part of it. So that was nice. I was a little bit surprised in a good way to see that the majority of the people that I personally photographed um, were very much willing to, to do, um, to be part of it. Um, I think it wasn't difficult to find people, at least for me, but it was difficult for myself to get out of my comfort zone. And again, because I'm a very antisocial person, um, getting in, getting myself uh, warmed up and like, you know, like getting ready to, to know what to say and um, making myself not seem like a salesperson when going up to strangers because they would like be like, no, what are you trying to sell me? Like. And it wouldn't be that way. Like I had to try to make them understand that this is for a good cause and that I'm not trying to get money out of them or, you know, uh, making them understand the project. And that was a, that was a big uh, journey for myself. Uh, but finding people, no, I think getting, I think at least for me with the immigrant community, especially, uh, the undocumented community, it was a little bit more personal because they felt like I don't want my face to be up there because what if they're, what if they're looking for me and they find me and then they trace me down through the picture. Um, obviously that's not nothing, nothing to do with that, but you know, there's like a lot of fear. Um, and also then there was also the fear of like some people had with like, um, have those masks already been used? Um, uh, I don't want to touch that pen or um, they had like special requests, but I tried to make them feel as comfortable as possible and safe as possible. Like everything is going to be okay. If, if you want to support, like you don't have to support through this photography, this photo, you don't have to, it's okay. Um, but just making people feel comfortable was a big thing. But yeah, I was very much happy to see that the majority of people were um, willing to, to be part of this. Um, yeah. I, um, yeah, I, so I, I've, I know too, um, kind of like what you guys were just saying that you kind of have to reassure people sometimes that what you're doing is, is sort of legit especially um, during these times, you know, you have strangers approaching you with cameras and, you know, we're wearing masks. So it seems, you know, there's a lot of, it's almost a lot of anonymity, but as photographers and as activists, we need to be able to relay our message succinctly and um, confidently so they can sort of be like at ease and they trust us because they should be able to trust us. But we also have to understand that they, some people won't trust us. Um, we live in an age where there's a lot of um, suspicion and 
you know, everyone's um, suspicion, not suspicion in a bad way, but just sort of, you, you know, you have to watch your back sometimes, especially with social media and where images end up these days. So, um, so yeah, I think um, that that's, um, that was, that was definitely a learning experience. And um, going off what you and Angela said, it kind of um, had me practice in the way of becoming like a negotiator with the like approaching people because a lot of times there were like people that didn't want to do it, but I was just like, oh, well, you look really nice today. Are you sure you don't want your picture taken? Or like, oh, yeah, we can do it another time, but maybe today is better because like, it's really nice outside. You sure you don't want your picture taken? So I'm just like, it really helped, like, helped me try to like, um, convince people to be part of this project because there was often a lot of people that I really wanted to take photos of, like different people. I'm just like, uh, I feel like if I didn't like get the picture today, it wouldn't happen. So like having like to convince people, talk to people, like further um, try to explain what this project is and how there's like no ill intentions with the pictures, like it really helped um, me like come out of that comfort zone. So it was really nice to do that. It was also kind of fun because it made me realize like the type of like um what I can like be as a negotiator if I ever wanted to or a lawyer or something like that but it was really nice to do that Ashley I will hire you to be my lawyer for sure <laughs> I got you I was going to jump in Roger because I was actually there witnessing Ashley in action one time as I did with many of the other participants but there was this one particular day when a student of mine from Parsons School of Design, who was biracial, uh, came up from New Jersey because he wanted to be part in, of this project in some way. So he came up and walked around with Ashley, um, and I joined them a little bit later. And I was witnessing Ashley uh, very diplomatically and very sensitively negotiating with uh, an elderly gentleman who sits out in front of safe harbors. And she was so persistent, but did it with such uh, sensitivity and gentleness that the guy finally actually agreed to have his photograph taken. Um, so these are the skills, you know, these are uh, human uh, interaction skills that I think you can only learn by doing this kind of work. Uh, Andrea Wynn has uh, posed a second question, uh, and that is, did this project help you to feel connected to people during this isolating time, whether it be with other participants and mentors or the subjects that you photographed? I definitely think it helped me feel more connected to the city of Newburgh. Um, like she said, this was following a period of isolation, a, a time of uncertainty, it's still a time of uncertainty. And I think um, the participants we were all we all did a really good job at being able to connect with community members and bond in a way through that and just this mutual understanding that we're kind of all going through this um not only the pandemic but this civil unrest i consider myself a documentary style photographer this is the way that we worked this project is a way that i work normally um approaching strangers mostly actually all all, all the people i photograph are strangers and um, it's a skill that I've, I've built up over a couple of years, at least since um, I graduated high school. And um, being it, during the lockdown, I, had, I, I, um, I didn't make a lot of images and it felt really good to get back out there and start photographing. And to know that I can, I can stop for a couple of months and then just like keep keep at it like it, it's almost like muscle memory and that's that's kind of uh, reassuring that it's it's a um it's a skill that i'm not uh, gonna lose hopefully anytime soon um it did help uh, me feel connected to the community because before um ever doing the workshop or before doing this project i was i'm really like a homebody so i wasn't really into um like going out, like um, meeting new people and stuff like that. Even at school, it was hard for me to like um, talk to new people. So actually having like something to motivate me and like push me to talk to different people was really um, inspiring and helped me get to that new level of like social 
like um interaction so that was really helpful and it was really nice because it helped me try to eliminate my biases that i sometimes have unfortunately about newburgh and like the type of people in newburgh so um get um get it to me um these different people um was really nice so that's what i have to say about it i'll just add um that i do i agree with like uh with uh, ashley um the same i feel the same way about being introverted and not really being a very social person like you don't at least for me i don't that's not something that i really do like going out and meeting new people and talking to people like i prefer to be home um but i did make connections with uh, new people that i'd never met before and even with the people that i did photograph that i already personally knew whether it was friends or, or a family member um I felt uh, that I got to, I got to know them on a deeper level, and I got to uh, have a conversation about everything that's going on, um, even if like the mask that, that I photographed them about wasn't um, uh, was not what uh, the topic that we were talking about it could have been like Black Lives Matter, even though the mask said um, COVID or whatever. Um, so yeah, it, I got to know people. In a, on a deeper level, even though I already knew them. Um, and I think it made us closer. And, and yeah, it, it, was, it was really nice. Um, and even with like strangers, uh, you got to see all these new allies. You got to see all the support and love. Uh, thank you all. So we have uh, another question from Juanita Alonso. Uh, did the artist go alone to take the photos? And I'm gonna open that up with uh, just a little bit about mm -hmm. how we organize this. Uh, and then if other people wanna make a comment, that would be great. Um, uh, because this was a portrait project, um, they were actually the first few weeks, we didn't have to go through the basics of photography as we did in previous workshops. What we did do was really focus on how to make a good portrait and the techniques that you employ uh, in order to set the subject away from the background, the use of lighting, composition, uh, focusing, particularly on the eyes, because that's generally most important. But in this project, very important because the people's identity, personality, character can only be seen in their eyes. Uh, we cut out everything, or the Inside Out project, you know, under their parameters, cut out pretty much everything about the subject other than their face or you know, their, their upper chest. That's why when you saw the video at the beginning, you saw actually the full frame photograph. Uh, so when we post it, you can go back and compare what they look like as opposed to uh, what the posters that are we pasted on the walls look like. So they were, we went through uh, you know, three or four weeks of working with them and we did go out with them uh, to show them and demonstrate the technique um, and then went out with them on a couple of occasions when we primarily, they were photographing subjects on their own, but I think the fifth, sixth, and seventh week of the workshop, we set aside two hours of the four hours that we met where we sent uh, the participants out with mentors such as Francois Deschamps uh, or Charles Williams, my student, myself, Roger, who was working with Therese, uh, or together as a, as, a, as, a, uh, as a team. So while they were doing the workshops, I mean, while they were photographing during the workshop time, they were with someone else. Uh, but I think for the most part, Many of you either teamed up with someone on your own to go out, as I think, uh, was it Angela that mentioned you and David went out one day? Or no, I'm sorry, Ashley. Um, but I think uh, the primary, primary amount of pictures, the, most of the pictures were made uh, on their own. Thank you, that's impressive. <laughs> uh, well, I think I agree with you, they're very impressive. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Um, uh, yeah, time was tight too. I mean, we, we, we did this all within a very, um, uh, you know, at times the, the, the organizing, everything seems extremely hectic. I think if we had 
more time, it might not have felt as um, as sort of crazy, but the work that, I mean, that video alone, seeing that video, it, it makes everything worth it, you know? Um, I, um, I, uh, I, I kind of wish after seeing the video, I'm like, oh man, we, I, I wish we photographed more. <laughs> I wish we had the chance to photograph more. I, I like just, just seeing it, seeing it in that context and, and just seeing the, all the faces of the community and knowing that these are people from the community is, is, is so important. And um, it kind of makes you want to continue the work, you know, um, in, in any, in any way, but. Mm. Are you going to continue the work? <laughs> That's to be announced. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you. So, uh, <laughs> thank you. To, to answer that question, um, I am just going to uh, mention who the other participants are before I introduce uh, Juanita and Stephanie. Uh, but Judith Lane uh, is from the uh, Philip and Edith Leonian Foundation, um, and they very wonderfully help, help us and support our projects here at NCTP. Uh, so thank you for joining us. And I want to uh, you know, mention that you are uh, a really wonderful and great supporter and you can make it possible for this to happen. Um, I see a Sarah and I'm thinking that might be Sarah Patsky. Sarah? Oh, yes, it is Sarah Pasty. Okay, Sarah Pasty. Uh, who was actually the person that connected uh, myself and Mr. Aguado sitting next to me uh, to collaborate on this project with the Dos Mundos exhibition. Um, and in, in a while, at the end, we're all going to be turning it back to us to Bill. But Sarah, I want to thank you for that. And uh, we have Andrea Wynn, and I'm sorry um, I don't recognize your name. Andrea. My girlfriend. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Well, thank you for the great questions, Andrea. I'm sorry I did not recognize your last name. Um, so right now, I will uh, introduce Juanita Lanzo and uh, Stephanie Lindquist. Uh, they are the co-curators of the Dos Mundos exhibition. And I'm just going to, that's all the introduction I think you really need. Um, and I think if you want to uh, expand a little on that, uh, you go right ahead. But I think you too have some really relevant uh, ideas and thoughts about how this, uh, this project that we did correlates with the Dos Mundos exhibition. So I'll just turn it over to you. Hi everyone, it's so nice Hi. to meet you guys. Um, and it's really nice to hear about your experience. It's really just kind of like brought mm -hmm. the project to life for me. And, to see the work um, and hear about your experiences engaging with community. Um, one of the things that struck me about the project that you've worked on is the correlation it has with some of the other photographers in the Dos yep. Mundos Reconstructing Narrative show. Many of them, like you guys, are taking the time to document their own communities mm -hmm. and document issues that really matter to their neighbors. Um, that aren't always told and don't always have a forum to have dialogue around. So I think it's really powerful that you guys are also like learning these skills. Um, and I hope they, um, I hope, I hope you to continue to gain from these skills mm -hmm. that you've, um, that you've practiced this summer. Um, I will mention um, in addition to Roger Richardson, who's in the show, um, I hope you get a chance to see it. Some of the other artists that I think kind of touch on what you guys are doing are mm -hmm. um, Layla Amatula Bahrain, yeah. um, Anthony Hambusi. Layla travels all over the world. Yeah. Um, she goes to Africa a lot to um, document um, women in particular, Muslim women. She's also traveled around the States extensively. She came out to Minnesota for a little bit, where I'm currently based. Um, Anthony Hambusi is another artist. Um, we have work in the show from Coney Island, in which mm -hmm. he engaged with the community there um, uh, in public housing for about 10 years, teaching mm -hmm. photography 
and just getting to know people, tell their stories. Um, and then also Cynthia Santos Briones, who I'll let you speak about more, Juanita, um, and then Yu Chen Xu, who also travels. So congratulations. And then I would love to know personally, um, have your subjects seen your work? And uh -huh. <laughs> so I'd love to know that. I'll turn to you. For me, um, I had a couple of my um, friends and like coworkers that wanted to be, like I told them about the project and they were so happy to be photographed. So I, um, so I photographed them and after the, we, we pasted on the building and stuff, I let them know where their location were. And it was just like so happy to see their, their face on the um, building. So that was really nice. It was like, oh, well, Ashley, thank you for this. And they kind of like, I think these, one of them like sent me a picture of them like in front of the building and stuff. So it was really nice to see how happy they were in order to be part of this project. So, but I hope to see more people that are like, I'm not like close with, like people like I um, met on the streets and stuff, um, be able to see the building. And hopefully if I walk past them on the street, they like say, um, mention it to, to me. So that, because that would be nice. Yeah, just like Ashley, I had someone actually like, send me a picture and was like, oh my gosh, this is amazing because, you know, when you see the portraits we pasted onto buildings, it's pretty, it's pretty amazing and breathtaking. So, yeah, it was pretty cool. He saw himself and thought that was cool and um, I'm excited for all my other subjects to see themselves. Also, I will say that um, NCPP is getting uh, a plethora of emails or phone calls from subjects asking them where uh, where their picture is. Um, <laughs> and have a, a copy of the photograph, uh, which I send digital files. So yes, people are extremely engaged. Um, I'm going to piggyback on that and say that four years ago, when I began the New York Beauty Photo Project, it was really kind of on a shoestring budget. Uh, I leafleted the neighborhood, asked for people who wanted to learn about photojournalism and documentary. There was an older group of people, about six or seven, that actually came to the information center, uh, the information meeting here at NCPP, and because they were a little bit older, we worked on a project on gun violence, which at the time was really devastating and still continues to be, but not to such a great extent, uh, for the city of Newburgh residents. And when we did that project, we engaged communities that will never have been engaged with the kind of work that we're doing. Mm -hmm. um, they became so involved and so connected. So I think it established NCPP as an organization here for all communities, uh, not only those communities that are coming in and uh, gentrifying, or I should say that rejuvenating, hopefully not gentrifying, but also those communities that have been here for many, many years. So mm -hmm. they have become part of this. They know NCPP. And I think it's because of people, you know, like Therese and Ashley and Angela and, uh, and David that, you know, they, they are kind of diplomats for us. They are speakers for us. And they're the ones that are bringing in a lot of interest and a lot of, uh, a lot of interest in what we do here. So yeah, people are, are asking for their portraits. Uh, I will say also, uh, you had mentioned, someone mentioned about whether we're going to do this, uh, whether we're going to continue this. I think Juanita uh, mentioned that. And it's so, it was so successful, they did such a great job that I think this model of presenting workshops and offering workshops is, is a really great model. And mm -hmm. there'll certainly be continuing workshops. And I think, you know, depending on what's going on in their lives next year, uh, after maybe some other issues as well in, in a similar fashion. Actually, I had a question, but I'm just gonna piggyback to what you just said and then Stephanie, and I wanna express how impressed I'm taken by the quality of the work. I'm following the development of um, the Newber Community Photo Project through your social media platform. So I've been following the daily post. Um, I'm sorry I'm not there to see them in person, but I'm really impressed with the quality, with how thorough uh, you may, Roger mentioned it looked chaotic, but from my end and as, as an spectator, what I see is with uh, the limited time frame that you have, you created a project that is very solid 
and I've seen the value um, in other projects where the community gets involved and photography is used as a tool for engagement and it's so successful because people really uh, get the, it's not even about empowerment, there's something that relates and connects to them when, when they see themselves or people that they know or the community where they live in these photographs and it's something that um, you know, with, with limited resources, you have done so successfully. And I was just thinking of how those mundos came to be and what inspired the exhibition. So I see a lot of the parallels. And one thing that I was thinking is how that was, um, the exhibition happened as that, as a result of uh, Puerto Rican specifically, Puerto Rican photographers not being able to exhibit their work, not being part of that larger mainstream and how they took it upon themselves to uh to to present that to create a platform for those photographers that open up to uh women to other artists of color of latino asian descent and there's all these parallels and like um uh stephanie was mentioning for instance lila i believe is in kentucky bill but also there's artists like think like cynthia santos briones we have 12 artists participating in this uh exhibit and i'm just admiring or, or, or amazed at all these parallels that connect where these very personal stories that connect to these photographers' experiences and the biases that they want to, to challenge or to address are very similar to some of the challenges that Angela, Ashley, David encounter along the process of making uh, the photographs. We have 12 artists, 12 incredible perspectives that um, are uh, shedding the light or talking about how you strive and retain freedom, how sanctuary or uh, this whole issue of borders that you know we've been talking about for ever, forever and years and we're waiting on, on a resolution or reform are part of that conversation. So the portraits feel very personal to me. I know that I was just thinking how, although they're wearing this mask, I, I, I can and I want to imagine and I'm thinking of the personalities that are behind the artists, the, the individuals that are wearing the mask. And I see individuals and I think this is, I mean, it's just gonna be uh, breathtaking. Uh, not too long ago in my neighborhood, there were some murals that were posted by another photographer um, and the portraits were taken um, in the late 60s, early 70s. And yet people were having conversations about these portraits around them. Like I will walk to the postal office and there will be people there. So our communities want and they, appreciate the artwork so by having this i i just think that it's just um um fulfilling a need and serving that community so congratulations to you to angela roger ashley and um i'm forgetting a name and therese so and alex so formidable work thank you thank you Arnie. and i'm gonna stop <laughs> <laughs> thank you <laughs> well, not thank you for stopping but thank you for the compliment sorry <laughs> sorry I'm just going to add one thing on what Lenita said because I think, um, and it, it's apropos of the question that you asked before, one of the questions that was asked. I think all of the subjects that uh, actually agreed to be photographed and participants participate, I think it was important for every single person to be part of this and be part of the voice that moves us forward in our society and uh, dealing with the issues that we are experiencing right now. So every single portrait that's up here is a voice that is speaking out and is speaking up for themselves, for their families, and for their communities. And I think that's a really great aspect of what this project is about. And the conversations that, are, that occur, like people passing by these installations, is really formidable. It's it's we we don't know what we can expect and what kind of impact we could have. Um, so I, I think that's a, a really important part of it. I just I just wanted to thank everyone for uh, participating, um, not only with the project but with the roundtable. Thank you for the questions. Um, I I wanted to thank uh, again um, Jr. and the Inside Out Project. Couldn't do it without them. Um, Vince and um, the participants and, and uh, Juanita and Stephanie, there's way too many people to think. There's so many allies that we have in this, in this fight that the, this project is rooted in. And this is how we get, um, this is how change 
begins, you know, starting, uh, starting a conversation and continuing it. So thank you, everybody. And thank you for uh, um, the uh, community of Newburgh as well. And thank you for, um, I want to thank them for helping us install the photos um, because it was not easy. So, um, so thank you for all that. Um, and yeah, so Bill, I'll hand it over to you. Vince doesn't know that I know absolutely anything about what's going on here in terms of technology. So he keeps on, <laughs> keeps on trying to coach me as Juanita has tried to do for the last few years, as Maraca has tried. I don't know. But all I want to say is I want to give a shout out to Sarah past because three years ago she became a partner in making those mundos happen. And she negotiated all the behind the scenes work with the SUNY uh, College uh, Arts Administrator. And I want to thank, you know, uh, Juanita and Stephanie, uh, because they both did a yeoman's job of, of taking, of selecting from fellowship previous winners which we believe and given money to artists in a competitive process and we, and we promote excellence, not for artists of color, but for our artists who can compete with anyone. And lastly, again, I want to get back to, uh, I want to get back to Sarah, who says, you really should check out this dude across the river about a year and a half ago, <laughs> two years ago. And so you know, I told my wife, like, we got a dude we got to check out. And I knocked on the door, walked in. Hi, I'm Philip Guaro, and you know, and, and I don't, and, and <laughs> I thought he was going to throw me out. No, he became simpatico immediately. But we knew right away that if those mundos as an exhibit was going to be funded, I wanted a community project of voices from the community that represented art that was created in the community. And I wanted, I wanted that balance, that it's not just the museums that have arts, it's also the community that has arts. And yesterday, I interviewed the founder of Enfoco, uh, a partner of mine for over 40, 50 years. And in came someone who was a naysayer about the exhibit. And she was floored, walked out. She wanted to buy some of the work. That's the impact. Lastly, I want to say that I'll take her money. <laughs> I, I told her that you got to see Roger. <laughs> Lastly, I want to say that the value of what uh, of what Vince and NCPP and all his partners have done is made the community a, mu a museum in and of itself of voices and images. And that is, has always been important for me when I, I started this business in the late 60s, early 70s. Yes, people are still alive on that side. So, thank you very much. Congratulations, my brother. And to all of you. I would love to read just a couple of comments. Um, and if those people who made the comments want to appear, uh, you're very welcome to. But uh, the first one was from Judith Lane. Uh, who is uh, from the Leonian Foundation. And she says, I want to commend the photographers on their hard work and on these amazing portraits. Roger asked very insightful questions. I appreciated hearing about the special moments and what was learned this year. Uh, Karen Mejia, who is one of the subjects, and she is also a council member on the New York City Council, said, uh, congratulations on the growth of the movement. Reflecting on when NCPP started and the different interventions you've made is encouraging and gives me hope. Bravo on the partnership with Enfoco Dos Mundos, a great link to connect our immigrant community and the Black Lives Matter movement. We are Dos Mundos truly reconstructing narratives. Bravo. Uh, and then uh, she said, she said something again and said, great round table. Thank you and the rest of the other artists. Super inspired, inspiring. Oh, and I want to hey say everyone, I thank you. Opening last night, and all I saw the photographs, and they're stupendous. So, all of you artists and photographers who who did all that work, um, it's really terrific. So, congratulations to all of you.
and to Vince and Roger for pulling it all together. It's per it's just beautiful. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for participating. And like I said, um, yeah, we couldn't we couldn't have done this without um, the people of Newburgh, the community, and everyone coalescing and and making it happen. So yeah. Um, I think maybe we should just have a final word by the participants, by Therese, Ashley, Angela, and David. Just one final thought that you can leave us with. Thank you, Vince and CPP, Roger, all the other mentors on the set out. There's so many people to thank for giving um, us this opportunity. And I just really hope that this public art action, again, continues these conversations about racial uh, inequality and um, keeping safe during this time. Uh, I would just like to say thank you to Vincent and um, everyone in the workshop for allowing me to come back and um, continue um, to be part of this project and also this um, movement. And I would just also like to thank um, the people that I have worked with, um, Angela, Therese, David, Alexandra, Roger, um, for um, so being supportive of, of me and of each other for um, taking the photos and just being there in order to have like support. So I just wanted to say thank you to that and everyone that has encouraged this workshop in order to um, continue the work that still needs to be done. So thank you guys. Um, I'd like to say uh, thank you, Vincent, for uh, all the hard work you've been doing and for believing in us uh, in making this happen, uh, for having that vision and guiding us. Thank you, Roger, for also being a mentor and being a great uh, friend to all of us. Uh, thank you, Therese. Thank you, Ashley. Thank you, Lexi. Thank you, David. Um, thanks to Ed, to Vernon for all the installations. Um, I'm very much appreciated, uh, appreciative of everyone and all their hard work and getting, having time in their day to, to get all this together and collaborating in this amazing project that I am very much proud of and proud of everybody, um, even myself um, and everybody having to getting out of their comfort zone. Um, yeah, I'm so proud of everyone. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Have a good day, everyone. Thank you and congratulations to all. Thank Excellent you, Anita. Work. Bye, my pleasure. Bye, Bye Sarah. Bye. Bye. Bye, Roger. Bye. 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 Bye.